The new Intel 12th Gen CPUs truly deliver a step change in performance. Whereas the last 11th generation CPUs built on the success of 10th Gen with a few tweaks, these chips are a revolutionary brand new design, a completely new architecture built for the ground up for 12,000 series. Not only do they support the new DDR5 memory, which at present provides much more memory bandwidth and will in future provide an incredible amount more speed than the current DDR4 standard, but they also combine Intel's brand new performance and efficiency cores. These performance and efficiency cores have different base and boost clock speeds too, giving you the advantage uh, of a multi-threaded CPU with lots of cores for great multitasking and the fast gaming performance often tied to single threaded performance. We'll be testing this in a few titles a little bit later in this video. The current range includes an i5, i7 and i9 lineup and this system has got the i9-12900K. You'll also find this system well equipped to keep the CPU cool with an Asus Republic of Gamers all-in-one cooler but also to overclock the CPU uh, with a powerful high-end Z690 motherboard. Z690 is the new high-end chipset uh, for these latest Intel processors. To make things nice and fair as well, we'll also be pairing the CPU up with DDR5, though the new chips are also backwards compatible with DDR4, meaning you haven't got to throw away your existing memory if you're looking to upgrade your PC. Let's go ahead though and turn it on using the power button located on the top panel, those front fans spinning with the all-in-one fans at the top left of the case not uh, lit up as they're a blackout design from Noctua, really, really nicely done. I've also just realized there's one peel I have forgotten, but I will correct that immediately. Oh yes. Oh, and uh, did I mention our Asus cooler has a screen? Uh, this is of course compatible with the new LGA socket as well, as the new 12th gen CPUs are larger than the last generation, and as such require a slightly different socket design. Uh, not necessarily a pro or a con, uh, but all part of these big design changes brought to us by Intel. I'm going to go ahead and connect a monitor, a keyboard and a mouse though, and really test out the i9-12900K in the tests that matter. Booting the system up for the first time, I'm actually just running through the setup process for Windows 11. Now, believe it or not, this is actually my first ever experience with Windows 11, so that's an interesting twist in today's video. It's just checking for any updates. Hopefully, there shouldn't be too many. It's a brand new operating system on a brand new PC, so that should be okay. I've just gone ahead and connected us up to the Wi-Fi network, though. I'll give this a few minutes uh, and then hopefully round off our setup process, but so far, it seems pretty intuitive. I like it. And then we can go ahead and name the device. I'm just going to call it James for now, keep things nice and simple. And then it does our standard Windows 10 sort of loading screen. Uh, so not too much has changed here with Windows 11. Not that we overly expected it to. The major changes you should be concerned about from a 12th gen perspective are the back end, are the utilization of DDR5, these new architecture of CPUs. That's what's really going to help give you this step change in performance. And I'd be interested to see on a separate note uh, how DDR5 stacks up on Windows 10 versus Windows 11, because I imagine there will be some quite tangible performance differences involved. This will take a few minutes though, and we'll rejoin you once this is finished. Ladies and gentlemen, we seem to have a little bit of progress. He said this might take a few minutes, we've seen that with Windows 10, but we've actually got this kind of cool light pattern going on on this uh, sort of seamless infinite black background. This is looking very, very promising actually. So let's give it a few more minutes and, uh, and see what happens. Hopefully we should be into the Windows 11 UI in absolutely no time. The first test I'm going to try out on our 12900K is Cinebench Revision 20. This is a 3D rendering test that gives a really good idea of both the multi and the single threaded performance of your CPU. For reference, a current gen Ryzen 9 5900X uh, gives you a score in the region of 6,500, while the score from a last gen i9 11900K is not far behind either. Let's run this new 12900K though, bearing in mind that typically generation to generation, we'd see a 10 or a 20% performance increase at maximum. Each of these orange squares is a single core, so each core is rendering a portion of the image, and you can see it's flying through this test. If you only had a four or an eight thread CPU, you would just be seeing four or eight squares. But of course, because we've got all of that multi-threaded workload, we've got all those cores, all those threads, the CPU is powering away nicely. Keep an eye on the score on the left-hand side, which will appear in just a moment. As we head into the final furlongs of the test, filling in the black, there we go, just shy of 10,000. Bearing in mind, that's nearly three, 4,000 points above 
what we saw only on the last gen range of processors from Intel, but the current Ryzen 9 5900X. It's not just the multi-threaded test that we can run, we can also run a single core test. This will take considerably longer, so we will be time-lapsing this, but that will basically restrict the CPU to rendering with a single box at a time. This is the most sort of close we can get in an artificial benchmark to Daemon, where the number of cores is often less important, though titles do vary on this front, and instead the speed of the cores is the more determining factor. So let's see what kind of score we're able to get with just a single one of our 12900K cores running at full whack. And the results are in. We've got 724 points, which is actually a fairly decent margin more than the more expensive current gen Ryzen 9 5950X and way more than the last gen Intel 11th gen chips for the equivalent SKU. You may pay a little bit more for a fancy motherboard and some DDR5 memory, but evidently the performance gains are there and clear to see. It's not just that though that the 12900K excels in. I've also gone ahead and downloaded CPU-Z. You can see here we've got the TDP information for the CPU, the code name for the architecture, and of course a benchmark section. I'm going to go ahead and actually benchmark our CPU and leave this for once again a few minutes to see what kind of numbers we're actually able to gather. Off the bat though at the moment, we're around 11,260. Let's see if that drops considerably, whether it levels and stays uh, at that rate. So far though, looking pretty good and the single threaded scores are also uh, in the region of what we'd like to see. To really make sure though that our CPU uh, is working nicely in our system, I'm going to stress test it. We're going to leave this for between 10 and 15 minutes and rejoin you to give you some temperature analysis of just how warm the CPU's got and by extension, how good of a job the cooling on our AlphaSync PC has done of keeping that new Intel chip nice and chilly. So it's been around about 10 or 15 minutes. The multi-core score seems to be holding up pretty well. And if we take a look at Hardware Monitor Pro, an app we can use to monitor temperatures, the CPU is sitting in the region of about 79, 78 degrees Celsius. This is actually not too bad. The new 12th gen chips are super powerful, use quite a lot of energy with a TDP of about 125 uh, plus watts, making this 78 degree temperature pretty good. It never went higher either than 82 throughout the stress test. And if we stop the stress test, you will see the package fall right down. Look at that, already to below 40 degrees Celsius. Uh, this Noctua cooler, the 240 mil AIO from Asus and Noctua are doing a fantastic job here. There are a couple of gaming tests though that I think it's definitely worth us checking out to see just how well the i9 performs in conjunction with a GPU. The first test we're going to run is 3D Mark. It's still a gaming test, but it's a synthetic benchmark as opposed to a real world application, but it is really, really good for comparing against other hardware in an apples to apples scenario and gives a really, really good indication of how your hardware will perform in a real world gaming environment to coin that term. We're going to go ahead and run the 3D Mark Time Spy benchmark. This is the one that's perfectly tuned up uh, for DirectX 12, which is of course the latest DX standard and much more up to date than DX 11. Perfect for our Windows 11, DDR5, 12th gen combo, where everything is running on the latest standards and protocols. It's going to go ahead and collect our system information, which it will use later to compare our results against the competition, uh, so to speak, with other systems out there. So I'm going to let this run through. It can take between 5 and 15 minutes, depending on the test that you run, and we'll rejoin you once we've got the results. Five minutes later, the results are in. We've got an overall score of 17,260, with a graphic score of just over 17,000 and a CPU score of nearly 18,000. We can actually go ahead and compare these results online against other systems with different specs. You can see here that our score ranks better than 99% of all other results. Above a high-end gaming PC with a 2080 and a 9900K by nearly 6, 7, thousand points wow it then sits slightly below this premium gaming pc and if we click the down arrow we can see this actually featured 
two top-end 2080 Ti's in SLI. So this system with one GPU and a modern CPU is basically as good as a PC with two graphics cards. Remember, of course, modern games can't use dual GPUs, so this sort of result is a bit redundant, to be completely honest with you anyway. That wraps it up, though, for the synthetic gaming benchmark tests. I'm now going to boot out of Windows 11 and into a Windows 10 game test drive, where here at eBuyer, we've got all of the latest modern titles ready to go at our fingertips to test things out right away. Let's shut this PC down in Windows 11, where the start button is confusingly in the middle and not on the left. I actually haven't shut down a Windows 11 PC before. Ah, not too difficult. And uh, we'll rejoin you in a second for the first of our gaming tests. The first game I'm going to try out is GTA 5. The reason for this is that we can actually go in, set the resolution to 4K, and run absolutely everything at maximum settings. The only thing we're going to turn off is VSync because that will be limiting our frame rate. Keep an eye out on the numbers in the top left. I will be reading these as uh, the benchmark runs though. Uh, this CPU usage in particular. If the i9 is maxing out at 100%, we know it's bottlenecking the system and restricting the maximum possible gaming performance. If it's not quite maxing out, then we know the bottleneck lies elsewhere and that the new Intel 12th gen chip is doing a great job of deflecting any of that power to the other components. At the moment then, our GPU is sitting at 99% and the CPU at just 13%. The new i9 is so powerful that a game like GTA 5 only needs to use 13% of it. Remember we are running at 4K with everything maxed out, so I didn't expect our frame rate to be like 120. This 60, 50 frames per second region is more realistic. And if you want more frame rate, you can tune those settings down. But the test today was to see how hard we could push the GPU and where the CPU would sit uh, in comparison. Still only 11, 13%. That's kind of crazy and shows how much headroom is left on our Intel processor. So we've established that 4K gaming is not a problem as the frame rate rockets up to closer to 70 frames this time. But what about if you're gaming at 1080p and your CPU is more of a bottleneck than the GPU? Well, that's the next test and where I think our new 12th gen chip is really going to come into its own. The game we're going to use for this high frame rate testing with 1080p competitive settings is Fortnite. You can see here we've got 1080p, everything tuned down to low, except our view distance, which is set to far. That will make sure we can see as many pesky enemies in the distance as possible. So let's jump into a game of solos. Keep an eye on that frame rate in the top left, but I will be reading it out as we go through because it can be quite tricky to read. One minute and 26 seconds, though, until we're in the main game, and we'll rejoin you then. Straight off the bat, then, we've got one kill on the board. Nicely done, and we're sitting around 380 frames per second with our CPU currently at... Uh, 47, 48% and the GPU at about 50, showing that the CPU is most definitely not bottlenecking the GPU as far as high frame rate is concerned. I've just taken another look at the frame rate and it's now topping out at 400 frames per second. Granted, there's not a great deal of action going on right now, but even still, that's crazy. That's absolutely unbelievable. Right, here we go. Just waiting for that circle to close, just being patient, waiting for the game to finish out. Yes, there we go, the second kill of the game. Nice, that was a bit of a weird kill. I'm not quite so sure what happened there. Uh, my, I was gonna say the PC froze, I don't think it did, I think my own instincts froze. But nevertheless, not a bad start to the game. Yes, there's kill number three. I think there is somebody else though on the horizon somewhere. I'm being shot at, I don't know where from. I actually can't see where these gunshots are coming from. That is never a, an encouraging sign. Okay, not so sure what's going on here. Frame rate still looks good though. So there is a, uh, a big silver line into this slight ominous cloud that is above us at this moment in time. And the zone is coming in. So I think we're gonna work our way in. But either way, if I die tomorrow, or I die in a second in Fortnite, then we still achieve some amazing frame rates in the region of about 370 FPS. Of course, that i9 really, really helping to alleviate any CPU-related bottlenecks that we might have previously been subject to with either current chips from competitors or Intel's own last-generation offering. That single-threaded workload is absolutely killer on the new i9, the i7, and the i5, actually, in the 12,000 series, making a gaming experience like this a lot better than it otherwise would be. Awesome stuff. And with that, that pretty much wraps it up for our first look and gaming test of the i9 12900K and by extension, the range of new Intel 12th gen chips. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to get subscribed to the eBuy channel. Check out our great range of deals over at eBuy.com. 
Thanks for watching though, and as always, we'll see you soon.